this could be the biggest upgrade in PC gaming history. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by KTC and their M27 P20P 4K 160Hz and M27 T20 1440P 165Hz mini LED monitors. If you want to get the best out of your PC gaming experience, be sure to click the links in the description below. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about how Intel, AMD, and Nvidia could be drastically changing the way we look at computer graphics over the next year, with the rumors flying around about Battle Mage and all of us hoping against hope for refreshes from Nvidia and AMD to bring better price to performance, but there's one major upgrade you can finally make right now thanks to something that just changed. What is it? Well, follow me and let's find out. That's right, today we're going to be talking about monitors, but not just any monitors, these are mini LED monitors and really good ones at that. Now, I want to talk about monitors today because honestly, it is the biggest upgrade you can possibly make to your system. Sure, graphics cards are nice and all, but if you don't have a good looking display, none of that means anything because, well, it's just not going to look good. Thankfully, these ones are good ones. Now, I haven't talked about mini LED in a long time because when they first came out, these monitors, at least the good ones from other brands, were in the thousands of dollars. Well, everything has changed and these are very, very affordable compared to what mini LED monitors used to run you. Now, these two monitors are from KTC and they thankfully sent them over for me to make this video on a 4K version and a 1440p version. And as I mentioned, they are mini LED, which is a huge deal because this brings true HDR to PC gaming finally at an affordable price. You can probably already see right now that these two, even on camera, even with all the lights on, do look pretty dang good. The blacks do actually look black rather than a gray that you would typically see on an LCD monitor. Especially this one on the left here, it does a really, really great job of controlling the blooming, and that's because these two monitors actually have over 500 local dimming zones, I believe 576 on both of them to be exact, whereas other monitors have far, far fewer local dimming zones and in fact, oftentimes are far more expensive. Now, I keep talking about price and that's something I wanna to touch on here, guys, because for monitors that look this good in HDR, typically those have been thousands of dollars, as I mentioned earlier. Well, the 1440p one on the left is in fact, I believe right now during the recording of this video on sale for like $480 is somewhere around there. And then the one on the right that's 4K is going on sale, I believe for $720 right now. Now that's absolutely incredible because because if we are to compare these to other HDR monitors available today, what you're gonna notice is stuff like, say, that Sony monitor that a lot of people were really liking. I believe that one's around $800 and it only has 96 local dimming zones. That's a huge deal because the more local dimming zones you have, the more control you have over the blooming that goes on as they can shut off more pixels in a more tightly controlled area, allowing for scenes like this where, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the lights real quick. As you can see now with all the lights off, areas that are black are actually black and it looks absolutely incredible. Now you can't really see me right now. Clearly the extra local dimming zones are having a huge impact on the contrast and blooming control on these two displays. Now there are also some 1440p OLEDs available. However, when you compare it to this mini LED one on the right of me right here, yeah, the price difference is pretty immense. So while OLED does have an advantage when it comes to having no blooming at all, the great thing about the mini LED monitors is not only can you get them more pixel dense, but it also allows for higher brightness too, which has been a major issue for OLED. So that's why I believe that mini LED, as you're seeing on these two screens here, is a great option for PC gaming. Now, I'm not a huge fan of mini LED when it comes to TVs, as I think the viewing angles can be a bit of a problem, but with desktop monitors where you are gonna be roughly directly in front of it, that's not an issue whatsoever, and it's a big reason as to why I've been reviewing and recommending a lot of mini LED monitors. Now, another great thing about these monitors is not only are they great for HDR, not only is the one on the right here really high resolution and very pixel dense, but also they have a high refresh rate and G-Sync and FreeSync support. Actually, the one on the left here, I believe is 165 hertz with G-Sync or FreeSync, and then the one on the right can get up to 160 hertz with G-Sync or FreeSync. Now, I did see a couple of reviews early on talking about how they're having issues with these two when VRR was enabled, but thankfully KTC actually put out some new firmware and I flashed the two of them and I've been having no issues whatsoever. I've been having local dimming plus high refresh rate, 
everything working exactly how it should be. Another feature about these two that's great is that they do have 90 watt charging on the back over type C and they also have KVM support. There's also, as you can see here, some RGB. I don't really care about RGB, but hey, if you're into it, there it is. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of my first impressions of these monitors and talk today about why HDR is so important. Now you've seen why it makes such a big impact in front of you, but I do wanna talk about it as well. HDR is absolutely fantastic for games because it gives you a much wider range, that's why it's called high dynamic range, for you to be able to view on your screen. So this means that bright highlights are gonna be much more bright, and then the dark spots on the screen are gonna actually be, if they need to be pure black, they're gonna be pure black. Something that only mini LED and OLED can do for you right now, and is a big reason as to why they're a huge upgrade over LCD. In fact, guys, in 2023, the biggest upgrade you can possibly make, in my opinion, is moving to a true HDR monitor, of which these two do definitely meet that standard. In fact, they're actually considered HDR 1000 monitors, something that is pretty difficult to achieve, especially on a 4K monitor, like you're seeing right here. If you can see it, I don't know if you can, it is reaching over a thousand nits. Let's go ahead and check the 1440p one now to see if it can as well. And actually it's getting a little bit brighter, but there you have it guys. There's kind of my first impressions of these two monitors. Now, I will say if there's one thing I would change about them, it would be the matte finish. It's a huge shame that manufacturers are still using a matte finish on displays like this because the whole point of using mini LED or OLED is to increase the contrast ratio and dynamic range of the image. And unfortunately with a matte finish, not only is it impossible, honestly with any finish to completely eliminate reflections, but I actually think that a matte finish makes it worse because instead of getting just one clear reflection, you're gonna get that reflection kind of diffused over a greater part of the screen. But to make things worse, a matte finish also unfortunately hurts the contrast ratios, it hurts the vibrancy, and it also hurts the clarity. So that's one thing I would definitely like to change about these two monitors. It's a huge gripe that I have with not only these monitors, but honestly every single monitor. It's something I've talked about a lot and I'm gonna keep bringing it up until manufacturers stop doing it on high-end displays. Hopefully that'll change in the future, but that is definitely one thing I would like to see improved on if they do say another upgraded version of these in the future. But that being said, when you compare it to all the other monitors on the market, I do truly believe that these two offer you great value and quite frankly, pretty great images as well. And that's the only reason as to why I even agreed to make this video in the first place. Now, if you want a more in-depth review, which is gonna include stuff such as, you know, how much ghosting is there, how fast are these monitors, I'll definitely have those on my Display Guy channel. If you wanna check those out, I'll have a link in the description to my channel where I'll be doing an in-depth review. However, I will let you guys know, in terms of motion performance, these actually did look pretty good when I just tested them out uh, real quick. Just at first glance, with just a little bit of use for a couple of hours, I do think they're definitely worth the money over other mini LED options that are much more expensive and quite frankly, typically offer much lower performance when it comes to blooming as well. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.